Hi everyone, Fox is here and welcome to my Readorama Readathon wrap up. Readorama was a readathon in which I decided to participate quite spontaneously. It ran between March 12th till March 18th, so this past Saturday. And um, yeah, I mean, I just decided to pick up some plays and participate. I had very low hopes for succeeding, but without further ado, let's just get started and see how it did. The first challenge was to read seven books, and even though I picked up, as you can see, mostly plays and short story collections, I did not complete this challenge. I read only five books out of this. Challenge number two was to read a book with Rama in the title or author's name. And for this challenge, I picked uh, Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell. As you can see, there are a lot of R's and M's and A's in this title and uh, Jen's name as well. So this was the book that I picked up. And yes, I did read it and really, really enjoyed it. So this is just a collection of different things that customers say. Uh, sometimes rude, sometimes weird, sometimes just plain stupid, and this collection is just fantastic. I really like the artwork, um, just look at this cover, uh, and uh, it is also blurred by Neil Gaiman. He says, so funny, so sad, read it and sigh, and this is very true because some of those things you just read them and you go like, how? Like, why people you would be at? Like, why? And the, 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 just, uh, yes. Um, it was very pleasurable. I really enjoyed it. Some of those quotes were collected by Jen him herself, uh, and other quotes were collected by um, other people and sent to her. I believe there is um, a second book in the series that she released recently. I'm not really sure, but I definitely want to read more of those because I myself uh, used to work in kind of like a library environment, that was my very first job, and um, even though I didn't really have that many weird customers, but I did have to face quite a few weird stories, like I have some stories of my own, and some of them are really ridiculous. I just hear, and it's the same happens in bookstores, whenever I go to a bookstore and I just hear people talk about certain books and I go like, uh, well, why wouldn't you just do your research before going into a bookstore? There is such a thing as Google, you know, um, yeah, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I gave it four, 4.5 stars, just because it was so short that I wanted just more of it. And honestly, I just wanted more. The third challenge was to read a book with animal on the cover, and for that one I picked Watching Glory Die by Judith Thompson. This is a script of the play written by Judith, and this play was actually provided to me by Playwrights Canada Press for uh, in exchange of, of honest review. And um, I did write a review, and it will be featured on my blog, but I just want to say that this is a story which was inspired by an, a real-life story of Ashley Smith, who was um, in prison for several years. She was a teenager, and she was in prison for about five years, and unfortunately she died in prison uh, back in 2007, I believe, um, and her death... Um, caused a lot of controversy because um, both the warden and deputy warden were charged with the criminal negligence since um, she was obviously exhibiting different uh, symptoms of mental health illness, um, mental illness, and uh, she was also obviously suicidal and instead of being um, kept in a psychiatry ward or some place where she could have been provided um, adept care, um, she was um, kept in isolation and eventually she killed herself. Um, that was uh, the basis of, um, of the story that inspired this play. So this play is a one-act play and it is told from three different perspectives of the main protagonist, Glory, uh, her mother, uh, and her adoptive mother and uh, one of the guards in the prison. This is a very uh, difficult play to read. I'll be completely honest. This is not cheerful. It is not. It's 
it's very hard to read because it deals with very serious issues of mistreatment of women in prison, plus um, it deals with mistreatment of people with mental illnesses, and just reading this play makes you really sad. And however, just because this play raises some very important issues that still exist in the um, judici judicial system, um, I think it's a very important play to read. I gave it four stars, not just not because I enjoyed it. Um, I appreciated the way the writing uh, depicted different mental and emotional states of three protagonists. Um, we can see that Glory is very much um, haunted by different hallucinations and she imagines uh, her birth mother is a crocodile who will, uh, you know, um, crawl into her cell and drag her into swamp. Um, her mother, adoptive mother, um, her name is, yeah, Rosaline. Uh, her adoptive mother, Rosaline, is, um, keeps thinking about her daughter in prison and she kind of feels as if she has this sort of mental link to her daughter and she almost feels as if she can feel what Glory's feeling and the guard, um, Gail, she is a bit torn between her work and what she's supposed to do and um, her own internal hatred towards the system because she is this she's as trapped as everyone else in that play I cannot say that I enjoyed it just because the topic of this play is so difficult to swallow but at the same time like I said I appreciated the language and I appreciated the visual images that it provided, like it created, but um, however, it's it's just very difficult to read. I did not give this play more than four stars because I feel that this play was kind of missing um, the suspense element, so we basically go into the play knowing exactly how it's going to end. There is no mystery behind it. Um, it's like just something that you go and read on news like it's basically like a news report. It's very similar to what you can find online about Ashley Smith's death. Um, that's why it was missing this kind of like a fictional element that would keep you hooked um, by this play. However, I still think it's a very important play, and I do encourage everyone to read it just to, you know, to understand the um, the depth of issues that exist nowadays. Um, obviously, it has a crocodile on the cover, so I can conclude this challenge to be completed. Next challenge was to read a book where main character shares your initial, and for that challenge I picked A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. Unfortunately, I did not read this play. I was kinda... Uh, I just didn't have time. Um, I'm a reader later, but since I still have had a gabbler in my brain and it's so fresh in my mind that I just don't feel like reading more Ibsen. Which, which is weird, because when I picked it up for this challenge, I thought that I would be in perfect mood to read more plays by Ibsen, but apparently I was not. So I failed at this challenge. Next challenge was to read a book with Irish theme or somehow related to Ireland, and for that challenge I picked Salome by Oscar Wilde, because obviously Oscar Wilde is an Irish playwright. However, I did not read this play, so there was no really um, a like, particular reason for that. I just didn't feel like reading it, um, because I um, basically asked my friend for the summary of the plot and he gave it to me, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm, I don't feel like reading it right now, so... But it's very short. Um, I'm going to see this play later this summer, and I will definitely read this play later this year, but um, when it comes to this challenge, I failed. Next challenge was to start a series, and for that one, I picked issues number one and two of Magazine, which is self-published by Sophie Carlin. This is Ceremony issue one. Uh, the theme of that one is flight, and number two's theme is mouth. As you can see, the covers represent the themes of these issues. I enjoyed both of them. I think Sophie Carlin has um, a definite talent when it comes to magical realism, and that is one of her, of her favorite genres, and mine as well, actually. Um, I did enjoy this. I, I found them incredibly short, though. I They're just so short that I was like, oh my god, I read them in like five minutes. That's just not fair. <laughs> I 
I need more of this. Um, but yeah, I gave both of the volumes four stars. Challenge number seven was to read a book with a character who has an illness, and for that one I picked Waiting Room by Diana Flax. This is a play which was also provided to me by Playwrights Canada Press in exchange of a review. And this play is about a couple who is going through a very hard time because their baby daughter is uh, diagnosed with brain tumor. She undergoes uh, different therapies and also undergoes surgery. And basically this is the story about how those parents are coping with the fact that their daughter um, might possibly die any moment. And also um, there is also a doctor, a very brilliant but bad-mannered uh, surgeon who is also involved in this and at some point he also faces some sort of like medical um, um, issue himself. I really liked this play. I have never thought that uh, there would be ever a point in my life when I would pick up a book which has to do with cancer and I would say, you know what, I bloody loved it. But this is the case with this play and I'm being completely honest here. Um, reading about cancer or any terminal disease is not easy for me because I have a, fam um, a family history of cancer and this play, however, is written so brilliantly. It is both funny it is witty, it has a lot of medical humor and doctor's humor, which, if you don't know, is, can be very peculiar. Um, I also happen to uh, be raised in the family of doctors, so I do know when it comes to, you know, those weird humor of theirs. Um, and this play is written very well. It's two-act play, and um, it's uh, like the point of view alternates between uh, parents and also the doctor and his assistant. Um, both parents deal with this fact that their daughter is seriously ill uh, quite differently. They make friends with the other uh, parents at the hospital, they make friends with certain nurses, um, they also come up with different nicknames and descriptions for medical personnel. Um, a father of this girl keeps researching every possible treatment online, so he sort of becomes like a quasi-professional himself. Um, and the doctor is also, um, on one hand, he's so brilliant and he's so uh, knowledgeable when it comes to this type of disease and the treatment and everything, but when he himself has to face some sort of issue that comes to his, his own health, um, his godlike persona is basically dumped back to earth and he has to face his own mortality, which can be very jarring for uh, someone who um, has this sort of like a god complex. I really enjoyed this play. This is a very realistic portrayal of everything that happens in the hospitals, of the way that medical personnel behaves, of the way they talk, of um, how some certain, you know, medical uh, ethics issues can come up when it comes to death and life situations. It's just brilliantly written and this is not something that I can, you know, say lightly when it comes to such a serious issues as cancer and I enjoyed reading this play. It kind of hooked me up from the very beginning. I just couldn't put this play down. I read it in one sitting and I just wanted to continue reading it. It's, um, it's not that long, it's about 100 pages long, but uh, it's just, I couldn't put it down. It's so well written and I really enjoyed the ending as well. Um, in spite of everything that happens and I don't want to give it away, but I really felt for this doctor who was um, struck down by certain things happening. Um, I really enjoyed his, um, his character and I think that uh, even though we met those types of characters before and probably the most famous ones that come to my mind are Dr. House um, in, in the sense that they kind of have the same uh, god complex um, and also Doctor Strange for some reason. I don't know why but I kept thinking about Doctor Strange um, and this this is such a well-written play. I really enjoyed all the notes when it comes to author's descriptions of the characters. For example, one of the descriptions there, they're just so on point. I just want to pull it up for a second. For example, the description for the um, 
doctor's assistant for the surgeon's assistant whose name is Melissa D'Angelo. Uh, it, she just writes there, persistent, attractive, sharp as hell. I like those descriptions. They are so on point and instantly create the image of the character in my head. I think it's very, very well written play. Oh gosh, uh, my camera died right in the middle of me talking, so I'm not even sure where I stopped. Anyway, how I was saying, I really enjoyed this play. Um, it is written really well. So I gave this play about five stars. There was a, like a small thing at the very end of the play which I did not fully like. And that was the fact that the author decided to give it an epilogue. Act number two has 15 scenes and I kind of felt that the last scene in that act was perfect as the ending, but however, she decided to introduce the epilogue. I was not very sold on epilogue itself, however, I understand why the author decided to write the epilogue because it makes sense, it kind of wraps up things together. However, I did not fully like that epilogue because it was so extremely short and kind of felt unnecessary in some ways. But still, I really enjoyed this play, so basically it's almost 5 stars, like 4.5, almost 5 stars. And the last challenge was to pick up a book blind, meaning that you have to pick up a book that you know nothing about. And for that one, I picked up Line and Wait by Liz Nugent, or Nugent, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Um, unfortunately, I read about 50 pages of this book and I had to DNF it. Um, I try not to do that. I honestly hate not finishing books, but this book I just didn't enjoy. Um, there is really nothing wrong with this book. It has over four star rating on Goodreads. It is a thriller. It's about a man and a woman who find themselves um, committing murder and then how things progress from there. The, what I did not like about this book is actually the fact that the, the book starts with uh, the murder scene and there's really no mystery behind what had happened. We know from the very beginning what happened, so it's not like it's not a detective story, it is a thriller. Uh, we know exactly what happens, and basically the whole book is just about how this murder investigation goes on, and I assume how the, um, the murder charges are, are pressed, essentially. I found the writing quite gripping. It's not a bad writing, I did enjoy it, but after reading 50 pages I realized that I did not really care for any of the characters. The book is told from multiple perspectives. It's told from the perspective of the judge, of his wife, their teenager son, and also the sister of the girl who was murdered. I Maybe there are other perspectives that are added later on, I'm not aware of it, but in those 50 pages that I read, and the book is only about 300 pages, so it's not that long, um, I realized that I couldn't care less for any of the characters. Uh, they all have distinctive voices, so it's not like there was something wrong with writing itself. I just realized that this is the book not, which is not for me. I take no pleasure in reading about murders from, say, the perspective of the killer, and it has to be very well-written novel and very gripping for me to actually read from the perspective of the killers. Um, I did enjoy the voice of the sister, but I did not like the judge or his wife or their son, I just didn't like anyone. And since I realized that I would be basically wasting my time reading this book, I decided to DNF it. Like I said, it's not a bad book, it's just not the book for me. Especially at that moment, I was not in the mood for this particular type of story, so I'm not very keen on thrillers. Um, I do understand why this book would get like high ratings, because it's it's very engaging, it's a very light read. I can totally see myself reading this book, say, on a beach somewhere on vacation when I have nothing else to read. But at this point of time, especially since it was for readathon, I just couldn't read it. So I'm going to DNF it. I might donate this book to the library or uh, give it to one of my friends, but I don't really see myself reading it. Well, this is it. This is my wrap up for Readorama Readathon. 
I managed to complete four challenges out of eight. So obviously I did not complete all challenges, so I failed. But overall, I did enjoy reading a lot of plays since um, I also had to read a couple of plays for the reviews and I did that and I enjoyed them. So that was a success. Um, I, I'm not very good with readathons and um, just the fact that I decided to try I think is a good thing on its own. And um, yeah, hopefully there are more people who were more successful than I was. But nevertheless, I did enjoy what I actually read, and uh, some of those challenges were quite fun, even though I do admit I had a lot of trouble picking up a book with, um, like, Irish theme or Ireland-centered uh, book. That was a bit challenging, and I did not complete that challenge. <laughs> so yeah, this is all. I will provide all the links to my written reviews on my blog down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye! I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> the next challenge was to read a of ceremony by Sophie Carlin. Zine, how she calls it. God, my back hurts. Funny, this is a literally. I cannot pronounce the word. Lit the everything revolves about about around.